The next thing we want to do is we want to uh, start to support our piping. So we need to support the jacket piping from the ground and we need to support the carrier piping from the jacket pipe. We need to support the carrier piping throughout the jacket piping, but also at these three ends where the jacket and carrier will be connected at that flange. So we can do this by adding in a beam section uh, which will be rigid to connect the carrier to the jacket at the ends. And we'll start to do this by adding in a beam section called a link, which will take the form of a very small pipe, uh, but it will just be a rigid connection link. So we can do that by inserting, coming to the insert ribbon under structure, beam section properties. And we're gonna do a non-standard section type that we're gonna create and we'll name it a link. The outer diameter will be one inch. We'll leave the thickness as 0.28 inches and the material name will be rigid. So with that, we can click okay. If we open our input grid on the section ID tab, we now see this link that we just created, which means that we can add in beams that uh, use this section ID. And we're gonna add those in at the three open ends. So I'll start by selecting E0 as my active point. And on the insert ribbon tab under the structure grouping, I'll select beam. You can see we're inserting beam M1. We're going from point E00 and we're going to go to point C02 on the carrier pipe. If you needed to show the carrier pipe again to take note of that point, you could do that. But in our case, we know the three point name. So we're going to point C02 on our carrier pipe. And if we press tab off of that input field, you'll see that the offsets DX, DY, and DZ are automatically updated. And because our offset was 0 0.003, and this is being shown with just two decimal points, it looks like it's 000. So there really is no uh, meaningful offset here. The section ID that we'll use is the link that we just created. And with that, we can click OK. And we have a very small uh, link created here, you can see the M1. And if you wanna see the small link, you can come up to your view ribbon tab and under mode, select wireframe, zoom in a bit, and you see that very, very small link. And this also lets you know that you connected to the right point on the carrier because if it was a point that was far away, you would actually be able to see that. But you can see the, the two points that it's connecting are very, 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 very near to each other. All right, we'll do the same thing over at the other end at point E10. So I'll select E10 as my active point. Again, from the insert ribbon tab, under the structure grouping, I'll select beam. This time we're creating beam M2 from point E10 to point C12. Again, with the section ID link, and we can click OK. And last one is at point D00, so select that as your active point. From the Insert Ribbon tab, we'll come over to our Structure Grouping and select Beam. For Beam M3, we're going from point D00 to point B04 with the link, Section ID, and we can again click OK. So we have our three rigid links to connect the end of our jacket piping to our carrier piping. The next thing we're gonna do is support the jacket piping from the ground. So we do have anchors at the end of the carrier piping, but we also wanna add some supports to the middle of the jacket piping to support this whole system. So I'm gonna change my view back to solid model view. And I want to insert some vertical V-stop supports at points E3 and E5. And I can 
uh, insert them at the same time by selecting both points. So I'm going to close out my input grid. I always like to clear my selection before making a selection. So I'll come up to my select ribbon tab and select clear. You can also hit control Q on your keyboard to clear the selection. And then I will make my selection by holding my control button down on my keyboard and selecting point E3. You should see the name of the point change to red and that signifies that it was selected. And then I'm still holding control and I'll click on point E5 to select that point as well. So you should see both points E3 and E5 are selected. And now we'll come up to the insert ribbon tab under supports, I'll, se I'll select support. And in the support dialog box, I'm gonna select the support type as VSTOP. I will leave the default selections here. Notice that the support ID is E31. Even though I'm selecting two points, the first named point in my selection will be shown in the support ID input. And I can click OK. We see both supports come into the model at points E3 and E5. The next thing I want to do is I want to support my carrier pipe inside the jacket from the carrier two points on the jacket. And I'm going to do that at four points throughout the carrier and jacket piping. I'm going to do that here, 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 and here. So at this point, you would want to take some notes down of these point names because we'll need to know them to input them into the support dialog. Now I'm going to open up my input grid again. And on the segment tab, I'm going to check show for my carrier pipe. And I'm going to uncheck show for my jacket piping. I'm just focusing on my carrier piping now. I'm going to place the supports on the carrier and they're going to reach out to support it by the jacket. So to help me see the model, I'll close my input grid and we'll start this at point C3. Remember at these points is where we were going to place the supports out to the points on the jacket uh, that we marked down. So starting at C3, this will connect out to point E1. Uh, with my active point as C3, I'll insert a support. The support type this time will be guide. I'll tab down to my gap up, which will be 0.2 inches. My gap left will be 0.1 inches and my gap right will be 0.1 inches. And I'm going to apply a friction coefficient of 0.3. And I wanna jump up to my connected two. Our default connection is to ground, but we're actually gonna connect this to point E1 on our jacket pipe. So I'll type in E1 and we can click OK. You see that there are squares on the inside of the support in the left, right, and upward directions. Those represent our gaps. And there are no squares on the outside of the supports because this is not connected to ground. This is connected to the jacket piping, another point in our piping system. So we're gonna do the same thing at point C5, C6, and C10. Same support and support settings, just connecting to a different jacket point. So I'll select C5 as my active point. I'll come to insert support. All of the settings of gaps and friction are still applied. And we just need to change the connected to point. This will be connected to E3. And we can click OK. Continuing on to C6. Again, I'll insert a support. This one will connect to E5. Okay. And next I'll pick C10 as my active point. Insert a support. And this one will connect to E9. And I can click okay. These supports are going to guide the inner carrier pipe inside the jacket pipe, and they will provide clearance at the side and top, and they'll rest on the bottom. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. 
If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.